Um, all right, let's go big picture here. The basketball opinion asks, if a breakaway actually occurs, who will be invited? I can't imagine attorney with just Power 6 programs, top 10 conferences only. What he's getting at here is there's been, you know, constant curiosity and recent comments by ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips about um, the idea that football might break away to its own entity down the road and not be so latched to the NCAA uh, could this eventually mean something more detrimental for the NCAA tournament as we know it? Um, I don't think so. So I guess the question is, if a breakaway actually occurs, who would be invited to a new NCAA tournament and what would it look like? Uh, I'm going to stop the question at the pass there because I don't believe that's going to happen. Now, it's obviously something that could happen, but there are a lot of factors to take into account here. Um, so I'll be quick on this and I'll have GP uh, chime in as well. You also have to consider that uh, television, when it comes to the men's NCAA tournament specifically, and obviously men's and women's basketball have to abide by, you know, similar things, not identical, but similar things, because one, they just had a gender equity review, uh, a major one. Um, and also you have Title IX. Uh, but there can be obviously slight differences between the two uh, tournaments. Uh, CBS and Turner, which have the rights to the NCAA tournament, will, would also have a voice in this. And I don't believe that television would desire a product that got rid of um an NCAA tournament field in which, you know, 25% of the field or so uh, were schools from outside the power conference structure there. We just had St. Peter's make the Elite Eight, and we just had an NCAA tournament with a lot of factors contributing to this parish where the ratings were, were better this year than in many years, even pre-pandemic in the modern era. Uh, so much of the selling point of the NCAA tournament is the small guy being able to, to do that, and it is a major pull for casual sports fans. So this idea that the NCAA and the schools involved in the power conferences would break away and redefine what division one means and think that they could have some sort of NCAA tournament that might be uh, 68 teams or 64 teams. And you only would get entry through automatic qualifying or at large uh, consideration. If you were in this new tier, uh, it's just as not as desirable of a television product. And I don't think it's as, as profitable as a model. So my prediction is that we never get to that point. There's a chance that if we look up in 10 years, could the NCAA tournament have some slight modifications to it? Yes, but I have had conversations with conference commissioners, people tied to the transformation committee. And this, while it certainly stands to be a scary prospect, and obviously I think it could be one of the dumbest things that they could possibly do is to screw up the NCAA tournament, which is one of the most perfect things in American sports. Um, I, I do think there's enough conversation and enough awareness that if we're going to change what the NCAA and what college sports is, we, we, there's a lot of things we need to do with that. But altering how we construct this 68 team field and making any kind of drastic changes about who qualifies for it and who doesn't would probably be uh, a negative thing. And so I don't find that there's a lot of momentum for that right now, which isn't to say it couldn't get there, Parrish, but it feels like the appropriate hesitations and in conversations that need to be had about not effing with the tournament. They seem to be good with that for now. And way more of the attention is focused on what they do with football and how they classify it. And then, and on and on and on. Well, the, the first thing I would say is they have drastically altered the NCAA tournament a bunch of different times in our lifetimes. So the idea that they wouldn't mess with it again uh, seems to ignore history. They they've messed with it a lot. Um, I understand all of your concerns and I think I share most of them. Like the St. Peter story is awesome. And if you go the breakaway route, you, you know, it, at least in some versions, you lose that by extension, you lose peacock impersonations and who wants to lose peacock impersonations? No one. No one right. So this is all stuff that needs to be considered, but I'm telling you, it ain't hard for me to imagine them breaking away. And saying we're going to sell a um, a basketball tournament, a college basketball tournament to Disney, to Amazon Prime, to Netflix, to CBS, to Fox. And yeah, you're going to lose the St. Peter story every once in a while that you get and the Butler story and the VCU story and the George Mason story. But you know what you also lose? A, a Thursday afternoon game between uh, Boise State and, uh, you know, uh, 
Richmond. You're not heartbroken about that, are you? With all due respect, obviously. Wow. Now, yeah, now it did Richmond like that. It just popped into my head. That, that, uh, I, Boys it, State, I understand. Richmond's completely. I Parish, I get what you're saying. Like, who's, hey, who's, I, I, who's running this thing? The NCAA runs the tournament. They're not going to run that. So who are they going to get to run it? I, this just Greg, way Greg Sankey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if I if I went to a television network and I said, "Hey, I'm going to give you every SEC school, every Big Ten school, every ACC school, and every Pac-12 school, and these leagues will be expanded by then." So we're leaving out. The, we'll take the best of the Big Twelve. Like we'll get Kansas in one of these leagues. And we'll get, I don't know how it all works, but like, we'll get, we'll get you a nice round number. I need you to know how it all works. This is still not more appealing. It's certainly not going to make more money. I'm telling you, we got nothing but 13th ranked team in any of these conferences playing a postseason tournament. You are crazy. If you don't think you can make more money. No, uh, you will not. You think they haven't done studies on this? You think yes, I, I think they have done. This would I, not be, people are not the, the average consumer has no desire to see mediocre power conference teams play in a national tournament like this. They'd rather see. What are you talking about? The mediocre power conference teams are better than most of the automatic bids. They, they draw almost no appeal to the average viewer, whereas the small school who they know nothing about playing against the big guy actually brings in a casual viewer. Yes. They don't no. want to see. They don't want to see Oregon State shouts to Beaver Fever. Going up and playing, uh, coming off an eleven-win season, playing in a postseason tournament. You're out of your mind. Not, not an appealing product. Certainly not in a sixty-four team field. If it was more than sixty-four teams, no shot. No. And who's going to run the thing? Greg Sankey. I've already told Greg Sankey's running. Yeah. Okay, Greg Sankey. He's laying down the decals, get, <laughs> prepping, Greg, the, prepping the press documents on the table. He's yes. got it all taken care of. Yes, he's doing all of that. You hire you hire you hire somebody to do it. What are you talking about? But who are you going to hire that's going to do it better than the people that already do it? I, it's, uh, hire the people who already do it. Okay. Hire uh, hire hire, hire uh, Gavin to come in and do it. Not, uh, yeah. <laughs> Gavin might be running the whole thing by then. I don't think this is. You, you ever? Um, hey, hey, take a big piece. Take a big pie. Divide it by four instead of thirty-two. See what you get. It ain't going to be more profitable. I'm just telling you. It's not. It's not. If it was, if it was, they would have been done by now. And and the TV networks are not going to want. They're not going to do that. They're not going to see that as a better product and something that can be spread to more people around the country and be sold to more people than what we have here. The TV it's ingrained network. in the American sports culture. I just, oh, you can, can try it. It would make money. It would not be nearly as popular or successful or viewed throughout the entirety of the tournament as what we have now. I, like, hey, you ready for this? These television networks you keep referencing, they have the option every weekend to put on the little guys on TV if they want to. You know that's what they not, do? That's not the – and they, they, they do put, it when it matters. They, they the put mediocre power conference schools on TV. You want to know why? Because a mediocre Big Ten team playing a mediocre Big Ten team is going to do a way bigger number on CBS than a, medi than a great mid-major and a, against a good mid-major. But if you'd put the mediocre Big Ten team against the mediocre Big Ten team versus a mid-major team going, check me the rating of San Francisco versus Murray State versus uh, whatever Big Ten game was on in the middle of January. What what game do you think got a better rating? The Big Ten game? Are you crazy? Higher than the NCAA tournament? No, I'm not crazy. Oh, check it out. Well, we're not comparing me. regular season games to NCAA tournament games. How about exactly. this? Exactly. You I'm put not a, talking you, about regular season. I'm talking about selling a postseason well now, tournament. Well now, well, now you're comparing apples and oranges. I'm telling you this. You put mediocre Big Ten teams on TV on a Saturday, and at the exact same time, put good mid-major teams on TV, and the mediocre Big Ten teams That's are getting a bigger not, number. I'm not arguing that point. The postseason, the tournament itself, is a different animal altogether. People okay. Think, well, you got you can't compare postseason games to, to regular you're season the games. You're not. You're what the one who just brought up Big Ten games in the You're, middle of whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm I'm talking about here's the point I'm taking. If you put Murray State and San Francisco on TV as an NCAA tournament game, yes. and you put, two, oh, you put a mediocre Big Ten team against a mediocre SEC team on the exact same uh, uh, channel at the exact same time in the NCAA tournament, the mediocre power conference teams will get the bigger number. That is probably true. And what are you arguing about? All I'm saying is that your 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 insistence that nobody will watch mediocre power conference teams in the NCAA I didn't say nobody. 
I didn't say nobody, More but I am saying this clearly. San Francisco. If you eliminated the NCAA tournament as it stands with 68 teams with 32 conferences represented and created a comp and created a tournament where six to 10 conferences were represented, it is not going to be nearly as popular or as desirable of a postseason product. I, you seem I, to be arguing the other way. I'm, I'm not I'm not certain what you're saying is true. That's what I'm saying. OK. And, and when you're dividing that pie. Um, between fewer conferences, fewer pieces, um, I think you could absolutely. I think there is a scenario where you could. It would be. It would take away a core piece of what we know as the NCAA tournament, but it it wouldn't be like the death of the sport, like some people think that it would be. I, it I, would severely damage the sport if you did that. I think. I don't think so. All right. I, next I, question. I, I don't. I don't think that's true at all. And like, I, I, I'm not even saying I hope it goes there someday, but I could absolutely see it going there someday. And a television network paying massive dollars. All I know is every time I've ever talked to somebody who works at a television network about this stuff, like their nightmare is VCU going to the Final Four. Their nightmare is George Mason going to the Final Four. So what if I tell you, hey, you don't even have to worry about any of that stuff. You've got nothing but big power conference brands in your tournament. Every game is a big brand against a big brand. I, that's absolutely profitable. I don't know that we'll ever get there, but I, the idea that it wouldn't draw big numbers and make a lot of money, that seems. That I seems didn't say it wouldn't draw big numbers and make a lot of money. It would not be as profitable or as I don't, I don't as the one that was, as we currently have. Because if I, it was, I think we would have already landed at that point. That's all. No, um, the, the, the fact that it, the idea that it might be is why we might eventually land at that point. I think there's real resistance in the sport to not go that direction. But if we ever got to a point where four power conference commissioners said, hey, we don't need these other leagues anymore. We can do this without them and we can make more money without them. Let's go to a te- let's go to the television networks and see what they'll just buy. Hey, if we give you this tournament, we're not going to have. St. Peter's and Murray States and San Francisco's, but we're going to have nothing but big, big brands. What does that look like to you from a, a, a contract perspective? I think there'd be literally billions of dollars put on the table for that. Billions with a B. I absolutely could see them making a, like not just a lot of money, but more money than they're currently making. 